Hi, welcome to my channel, Look 10 Years Younger. I'm 47 years old and I review and talk about all kinds of healthy aging products and skincare and supplements and more. So I made a video which went viral about earthing a few months ago and there were thousands of questions. So in my last video, I promised that I would make a Q&A video to answer some of these questions. So I started to research and I tried to answer these questions, but I'm not an expert and it's a massive subject. So I thought the best thing would be to get an expert to answer your questions. So I've been really lucky to get Clint Ober, who is the founder of the Earthing Movement. He is a pioneer and he was featured in the Earthing movie. He's the guy who, you know, started to make the first Earthing products and he's the best person to answer any of your questions. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for coming onto my channel. Um, uh -huh. So I've made a few videos about earthing and there's been such a huge response and I've had thousands yep. of comments and I wanted to make a Q&A video where I can answer some of these questions, but I'm not an electrician, I'm not an expert, so who better yep. to ask these questions than yourself? Obviously, <laughs> experience and you're the pioneer of this whole grounding movement. So first question, earthing and grounding, are they the same thing or is it just a, a word? Well, technically, they're two different things. Uh, earthing is to stick a rod in the earth. That's called earthing. If the electrical ground of your home, there's a rod in the, stuck in the earth, and it's called an electric. It's called an earthing rod. Uh, grounding is where you take two objects and you put them together so that they equalize an electrical potential. So there can be no static electricity. And 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 like people who work on software and um, chips and anything that's electrically sensitive, they ground them to the area that they're working on the metal table or whatever, or a grounding mat or whatever, so that when they touch anything, everything's at the same potential. So there can be no sparks and no charge. That's really more what grounding is about grounding, but they can be used interchangeably. Grounding is more of a, you know, it's, it's, it's about, equalizing two ground planes. Earthing is about actually sticking it in the earth so that Earth's free electrons can, um, so the earth can release electrons up. I mean, it, or it can absorb like a lightning strike. Okay. Yeah. Right, so next question. Um, if you have a specific problem, for example, with your arm, is it enough to put your feet in contact with the earth or do you need to actually put your arm in contact either with one of these grounding mats or the earth? I usually recommend the patches. You know, if it's a if it's a localized um, thing like an arm or something, and you just put a patch in the palm of the hand of, of the arm that is affected and usually within 10 seconds. Putting a patch on the arm or laying on, uh, you I've know. Got, uh, so you mean these things, I'll just share yes. what you mean. Yeah, if you're gonna, if you're going to, if you have an acute pain, uh, on the left side of the body or the right side or the either side of the body i either i usually put them on the foot or the hand closest to the pain and the reason for that is because um, electrons kind of follow the meridians and the blood the circulation of the blood is is the carrier is a, is a main charge carrier for distributing grounding throughout the body it takes about a minute for it to flow I mean, the blood flow circulates about once a, once a minute. So <clears throat> anyhow, um, yeah, you can lay on a mat. Uh, you can do any of those things. But if you have an acute injury or like, you know, uh, surgery or pain or anything that's acute, burning, hot, burning pain, you want to bring it down in a few minutes. Then you put an electrode patch on and the pain will usually come down in 10 to 5, five to 10 minutes. Yeah, so next question. I've uh, seen the studies on, on your site and on other sites as well. I've actually read comments from um, people who viewed my videos saying their life has been changed and they've got rid of all kinds of illnesses and problems and um, it's yeah. been amazing. And also in my life, I've, I've used it and had changes and my family have as well. So I think it's amazing. And um, some of the people who comment on my videos are part of the earthing community and they know all this already but most people yeah. are new to this and they yes. uh, they kind of there's a moment when they kind of think well this makes sense you know it's yes. like yeah, i mean 
when you're in nature, you feel good and it, it kind of makes sense that something clicks. So yes. my question is, why doesn't the medical kind of um, establishment take this seriously? Is it because of big pharma and that there's not enough money to be made? And do you think anything will ever change that? Well, um, you know, big pharma is, you know, they're, they're about, you know, the medical industry is, um, what can I say? Is You have to look at the population first. The population of the world by and large is sick. Uh, it's because a lot of food, no exercise and the way we live and just a whole bunch of things. And then you have the medical community, which they make a living off of that, of course. And then you have the drug companies, which provide the uh, uh, palliative care. I mean, the pills and everything to help people live because most people won't go change their diet. They they have a pill and whatever. So it's not one person to blame here. It's our culture. It's our society. And, um, yeah. and it's up to the individuals to uh, be responsible for taking care of themselves and their families and whatever. And it's a lot of work. But we've all been blindsided for the last 60 years with the screens, television and, and you know, everything that's come down, computers and so on. But anyhow, so it's, I, I don't blame anybody. It's just the way it is. It took 60 years for us to invent plastic and go plasticize the whole world. It took us 20, 30 years or no, it took us almost 40 years to identify the this modern inflammation that started in the 50s and 60s, diabetes, autism, lupus, MS, and cancer, and all of these modern health disorders, they all started to, to blow up in the 60s. And today they're growing exponentially and they're not slowing down. <laughs> so these are environmental health disorders. These are things that we're doing that's creating this problem. So you can't blame them necessarily. You, you have to blame, you know, get, people need to get up and move. Food production, yeah. marketing, politicians, yes. oh, everything. It's, it's, it's all about money. People are chasing money. And, and, and that's where I kind of, everybody you know i i'm on a little different page i think that we have a duty to take care of the young and take care of the old next question what do you say to people who use one of your mats for example they can't feel anything and they don't know whether it's working or not and they say oh am i wasting my time uh you know all the research that's been done and it's all published and um so it kind of we know what happens when a human body st steps on the earth if you put your bare feet on the earth, the earth is negative about, you know, 30 to 300 millivolts. So your body is going to equalize with that, meaning you're going to absorb free electrons. And primarily is it's the blood. Uh, as the blood circulates, when you touch the earth, then the first thing that happens is you increase the negative surface charge on red blood cells by about 270%. That's a fact, that's in, that's, that's research. Okay, <clears throat> so we know your blood is changing and you, you can tell that usually in 15 to 30 minutes to the average woman, because she looks 10 years younger because the, the, as the circulation improves, the blood gets in and out of the capillaries. Uh, she can breathe a little easier and um, the inflammation comes down, the pain starts to come down and they feel better and you know, it's just a whole different world. So, so we know that happens. We know that uh, there's a reduction of the tension in the body. There's a actual um, um, discharge. So, but, but anyhow, so there's, you can go to the Earthing Institute. There's all these studies that show all of this. So all of those things are going to happen to you. I don't care who you are, as long as you are a human being living on planet earth, then you're you are going to absorb Earth's free electrons. It is going to normalize your blood viscosity. Uh, it is going to reduce inflammation in your body. And then if you stay grounded long enough and then the immune system can shuts down the inflammatory response, then it can go back to restoring health because health is the body's most natural state. If you do not have health, then something you're doing is interfering with the body's immune system and its ability to maintain health.
So next question. Um, so is it true that the plumbing system and the central heating system in a house is actually grounded? So you could just touch your metal tap or faucet or radiator or even wash your hands under a sink in your grounding. Is this true? Yeah, those are grounding. Uh, those items are generally grounded to the earth. The metal radiators and in the home, a lot of those will have paint on them. So they're insulated. They're not conductive oh. when you touch them. Um, <clears throat> and um, if they're bare metal or you scrape the paint off, then you can touch them and they'll be grounded. Uh, the water, the generally speaking, the any copper plumbing in the home, especially the cold water side, that's all grounded. And uh, the water coming out of the cold water side generally is grounded. Uh, the hot water side is going into a hot water heater and there's couplers uh, that you don't have you know, continuous ground. Um, <clears throat> so, Yes, those are all grounded. Well, okay, thank you. Uh, next question. So, this, this uh, I had a lot of question um, about the dangers of grounding. So, there's been a lot of questions. What if my house gets struck by lightning? Will it travel through the cable and go into my body? Uh, that's highly unlikely because the first of all. Uh, <clears throat> lightning is trying to, you know, it's, it's, it wants to ground, it wants to get to ground. It's going to take the path of least resistance, the biggest pipe, the biggest path, so that it can immediately get to ground, and that usually happens in the flash of a second. Now, <clears throat> if lightning were to somehow get into your house, and it were to go through everything electrical, the, the, um, it would have to come to, you know, the, the charge, if it's coming up, it can't come up the ground wire because the ground wire would evaporate within a few millimeters of the, where the lightning were to hit the cable. And it has a resistor also. The resistor would be a, a shunt, meaning, push the charge away. But really the main thing is we use seven strand tinsel wire. That's seven little strands of crimped tinsel wire is crimped and so that it can flex and won't break, but they're wound together around a piece of nylon and then they're in a, and created in a jackets, but it's primarily so they can bend. But this wire is so fragile with current that it would evaporate if a a lightning strike were to hit it. But on the other hand, I tell everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're grounded or not. If lightning is going to hit your home, you better <laughs> run for cover because yeah. lightning is is massive. It is massive. Yeah. yeah. And it but won't matter whether you're the, grounded. Yeah. What, what you're saying about your cable, I guess your products have this uh, protective function, but if you buy cheap products off yes. eBay, potentially it doesn't have that. And no, you don't. You, um, you, damage. you have no idea what you're getting when you buy something off of eBay. You're buying it directly. Generally, those products are manufactured in China as and, and they're shipped via uh, the post office or whatever. They don't go through customs and stuff, a lot of them. And so people get them and they plug them in and no, there's no safety. There may or may not be, I don't really know. Some of them, a lot of them are just, uh, you know, a lot of electrical people, they say, oh, you, you don't want that resistor because then it's gonna slow down the electrons. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about grounding a body. We're not talking about lighting light bulbs. So we yeah. want dissipative, you know, we want it to be slow and steady and more like nature, more like what would occur if you were standing barefoot on the earth. Yeah, and I guess because you, you did all the studies and the research and you came up with these first grounding products, when you see these other fake things on the market, it must be really annoying. It must be, you know, super irritating. Well, yeah, it was for a while because as we were doing the research back in 2010, 
10, somewhere back in there. Uh, all of a sudden these things started appearing. And then all of a sudden the people that were buying them from us started buying everything from China. And the problem was, is like I said before, you know, we are a research and development company. It was never our mission or intention to go create a, uh, a conductive mat, put it on a bed and have somebody sleep on it and sell them and try to make a living. You'd have to be insane to even think that would, could happen, but it did happen. But anyhow, the point is we started out uh, using carbon mats as our original ground planes back in uh, 99, 2000. And then we would make a mat that was 12 inches, 15 inches wide, 30 inches long, something like that. Then uh, we would paste it to a piece of felt, glue it to a piece of felt, and then we'd connect it to a wire, connect it to the earth ground or connect it to a wire outdoors. And then we would have people lay on it and then we would monitor you know, there with biofeedback equipment or various other equipment, uh, what effects were taking place on the body. And then as time went on, and as we started doing more studies, all the people who participated in those studies, along with the researchers, they all wanted to take them home. And we couldn't reuse them anyway, because once somebody sleeps on them, you can't reuse it. So we started giving away, then all of a sudden they started coming back and wanting more product. And then one day we sat down and we said, okay, there's a demand here and nobody's gonna fill it. So we have to, we have a moral obligation because it's really dramatic what it does for people. And so we started making products and these were um, in the beginning, we, we, we wanted to give them something they felt in their minds would be easy. Uh, so we developed a cotton sheet and we put silver strands in it. You know, so it had like 5% silver. <clears throat> and we did that for a while because that's the only thing we could come up with that was affordable. Uh, and those were not, I mean, those were expensive. You know, they sold for two or $300 or more. And um, this was back 20 years ago almost. Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, so um, <clears throat> then as time went on, the returns, when you start selling something, when you give, we were giving away, we gave away a million dollars worth of these things. But when you started selling them, then all of a sudden people were paying real money and they would go bad sometimes in 30 days, six weeks or six months. And then they would want their money back. And then a lot of people didn't know they went bad because they had no way to test them. <laughs> and that's kind of what's going on in, you know, around the world today. Everybody's buying this stuff, but they don't know if it's working or not. And anyhow, so then uh, as time went on, we realized that, you know, these products were not producing the results for people that we were seeing in our studies. So we said no more of that. And we got, we spent about two years and everybody got mad at us because they wanted to keep selling the cotton. And we said, no, we're not going to do it. And because again, what we were concerned about is if, if grounding is real and it has these effects, then if somebody's going to buy something, then they expect those effects. And yeah. if you're, and, and if you're going to go into the uh, health world, you, you have to be responsible. And uh, so anyhow, we, we ended up cutting off everybody on these cotton sheets and then everybody went to China and they made millions of these things and they sell them around the world. They still do to this day. Amazon is the biggest distributor of earthing products in the world. They outsell everybody else in the world 10 to one. And nobody even knows what the hell they're getting. And then all of the, you know, whatever. So, but anyhow, so what we ended up doing is we ended up creating a, a special substrate material, meaning uh, a certain type of material. And then we put a grid inside of it, an electrical grid or a conductive grid. And then we covered it with carbon, uh, a carbon material and bonded it. And then we would sew it up or have them cut and sew and make it into what we call a bed mat. Now, everybody still calls everything sheets and everybody's still buying the cotton sheets because they, that's all they've heard in all the literature and stuff out there. So, but anyhow, we started selling the um, carbon mats, um, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago, something like that. And, um, <clears throat> and again, our customers are usually uh, 35 year old 
to 50, 60 year old females, they all have autoimmune disease. Um, and so that's why we had to be responsible because we were dealing with people's health, even though we weren't diagnosing and whatever, uh, it made their pain go away. It, it reduced the inflammation in their bodies and so on. But you can take the carbon mat and you can sleep on it for 10 years, the new one that we have, and, and it should last as long as you take care of it. Um, <clears throat> the cotton sheets, they're very, very, very rare. Are they going to last a year? And it's because the, the um, minerals in the body salts in sweat, perspiration, it oxidizes the silver because the silver on those sheets, it's just a very fine micro thin uh, electroplation of silver onto a nylon piece of yarn, micro thin. <laughs> and so it's very fragile. And, um, it, but if it were solid silver, it would last a little better. And we've tried that ourselves with solid silver. It does work a little better, but, <clears throat> but uh, carbon is the only thing that last that's conductive that you can put in a bed and have somebody sleep on it then the issue came oh my gosh what about i can't do this i can't do this because it's plastic or it's cold there's this it's whatever and i said i'm sorry if you want the health of benefits that we produced in our studies here's the product that will do it yeah if your health if your health is very compromised take your clothes off, get in bed and sleep on it bare, like sleeping on the bare earth or sleeping on the grass. And your immune system is going to, your inflammation is going to resolve rather instantly. You're, and, you, and, and within a shorter period of time, you're going to recover. Uh, if you want to use the sheets, they're fine. They work great uh, because your body, you put it on top of the mat, the black mat on the mattress, put the sheet on top of it. And it doesn't matter just as long as it's a cotton sheet. And then as you perspire, as you breathe, the humidity comes up in your room, the humidity comes, uh, you, you saturate, there's a little bit of moisture, uh, you know, half a cup of water every night comes out, you know, the, the perspiration under the covers every night. So that hydrates the sheets and there's enough moisture there that it can duck, conduct electrons. And so the, the sheet is grounded. So when you're laying on the sheet that's on the mat, then you are grounded. Now, so you if you want to lie. A regular cotton sheet it doesn't have to be a special no no we have some that we made up and we we make up a few of them every once in a while because everybody keeps asking for it uh we have one more round that'll come out in another few months but other than that but those are just secondary sheets uh, and we go ahead we we are going to bring out a full line and and hopefully it's more of a giveaway than anything but uh it'll be a silver cotton sheet but it'll have but if it goes bad, it doesn't matter because then the perspiration is going to work. But at least yeah. the people are grounded. It's really yeah. important that people are grounded. It's not all about EMFs and all this craziness. Okay, so next question. Um, they're, they're kind of similar. So one person says, um, I've heard you should never use your building ground for earthing. The chances are it carries a charge. And then someone else has written, uh, plugging into the socket in the UK won't ground your mat. It will, in fact, have the opposite effect. The earth becomes a neutral corridor. Now, this is beyond me. I, I have no idea. <laughs> but. I don't know. Yeah, there's, there is so much. That, you know, everybody's an expert about this. Yeah. And, and I have to tell you a story. I mean, you know, in the early days, I mean, in the US, it may be a little different now, but over 90% of our customers are female. Their, their moms taking care of their mom or their, their mom, older moms taking care of their daughters and then taking care of their families. Anyhow, but it's a female business because the guys all wanna run and buy a voltmeter and start measuring electric fields and start screaming around the house and and oh my god this oh my god but the the women they lay on it and it reduces pain they says oh my god i got to get this to my mom right now she sends that one to her mom buys another one and then she gives that one to her sister <laughs> buys another one the average woman would buy 10 12 earthing products within a year of the time she starts grounding mm. men will not buy earthing products generally speaking 
they'll buy EMF type products and try to make up grounding, but they've got to do it themselves. They've got to say, I know what that is. I'm, I'm smart. I know what that ground is. It's that thing right there. And you just ground in right there and you do this. And then you tie a wire around your wife's toe. She says, you don't need to buy this stuff. Just let me take care of it for you. There's been, I, I've got stories from a few divorces over that, but anyhow, um, it's kind of an odd thing. <laughs> And what it is, is it's, it's an assault on a male ego because everybody, men, we all should know about grounding. I mean, good God, you know, everything's electrical, everything is grounded. But yeah. grounding only came along in the 70s, you know, by in the homes and stuff. And now in Europe, it's a little different. They've always had ground there. But in the U.S., I mean, they've got clapboard houses with... Um, you know, Romax and no shielding, nothing. So a lot of the old homes are just, uh, you know, totally different. But but anyhow, so yeah, it's kind of, I mean, even for me, it took me, I didn't believe it, even though I knew exactly what I was doing. I didn't believe the results, because, except that I kept experiencing them. Yeah. And then no matter who I grounded, as long as I grounded them the way I, that we did in our studies, then they get the same results that we did in our studies. And that was what made this important to me that's what be, that's what made it turned it into a mission but but anyhow i'm sorry if i get, get off course on some of these questions right. bring so bring me home the next question will blow your mind but i'm going to read it anyway so when we are moving into a solar maximum cycle and when the earth gets hit with a strong cme uh, or other solar energetic events that energy temporarily overwhelms the Earth's magnetic field and penetrates into the Earth. It can also flip the polarity and particularly the ground conducts that energy strongly. So instead of negative ions, you're grounded. If you're grounded during one of these types of events, you'd be bombarded with an excess of positively charged particles. Um, so you have to watch when these solar events are happening and you shouldn't use your grounding map yeah <laughs> um, you, you know for instance in the electrical world the grid you know the power system that powers all of our electricity they are all monitored 24 7 um, <clears throat> and if there's a rising ground potential then you have to you have to raise and lower the ground put you know so you have 60 volts so you maintain 60 volts so this is all managed, but if the amount of ionizing radiation came from the sun that he may be talking about, it wouldn't make any difference because it would it would incinerate you. But you know, there's all kinds of natural phenomena, but you have to realize how infinitely small the human body is and how infinitely large the earth is and the universe. I mean, there's no comparison here. We're like we're like one cell in, in, in a human body, if that, in size. So but you are a part of all whatever happens in the universe. And we all go, you know, ebb and flow with it. But the uh, nature has provided much protection because it's like radiation from the sun. You know, if you stay in it too long, it's going to do harm. Uh, it's the most potent <laughs> radiance device in the, in the universe. Um, so, but that's ionizing radiation, but uh, in our environment, there just really isn't hardly any ionizing radiation in living environments and and so on. But anyhow, you know, I wanted to back up to that one question about if you connect to the building ground that you're going to get dirty electricity is going to come up or this is going to come up. That's all nonsense. The earth is too large. The earth's pushing uh, yeah. And we're talking about two different things. We're talking; they're talking about r wiggles and radiation, and it's really background noise, or it's just electrical noise. It's low level, very low level, static electricity. You know, like if you pick your shoe up off the off of a carpet and just pick it up, you'll create two to three thousand volts of charge of electricity. It, and you know, when you go touch a doorknob, if you see a spark, that's at least two to three thousand volts of charge on your body. Now that's significant. A little two millivolts or a few hundred millivolts or a volt of two volts of, of EMF charge, that's 
that's nothing um, in comparison. But but anyhow, so what's coming up the wire on that electrical ground in that building is DC current, a flow of free electrons from the earth. And they're not really going, they're not flowing, they're just going up and equalizing whatever is connected to it, equalizing that device at two earth potential. Now, what kind, ever kind of radio, you know, there's a thousand EM or FM, AM radio signals. There's tens and hundreds of thousands of cell phones and cell signals. And, and you know, and all of this radiation, all of this radiation that's in our environment, if you could see any of it, the, the world would be pitch black because there's so much of it. So, but that your, your skin is it's not going through your skin. It's not going through your body. It's not harming your body. It's not going to go, uh, you know, up your feet and, and cause a heart attack and do all these things. It's just not going to happen. Mm. Uh, it, I mean, I'm talking about grounding here. So, but what they're talking about is the electrical noise, the EMFers keep talking about in the dirty electric. Oh my God, that's going to come through my body. That is not true. What happens is, is this, this, um, uh, these frequencies, they're all over. Um, but if you're standing in the middle of your living room, when your refrigerator kicks on and, and creates what they call dirty electricity or your computer kicks on or the color changes on your TV set or your computer, you know, whatever, these are electrical noises that they're talking about. Your TV screen creates these things and, and um, <clears throat> it's not going to harm you. It's not going to go over and go through your body and have cellular damage or uh, you know those kind of things. X-ray, that's yeah. different. But we were talking earlier about the this dirty electricity thing because I had lots of questions about EMF and dirty electricity and how it's going to go up the grounding wire and be dam damaging to health. But actually, we spoke about this EMF industry, which is massive. Not not EMF, anti EMF. You know, anti radiation kind of industry. There's a lot of people making a lot of money. And there's lots of websites. When I try to research dirty electricity, a lot of these websites are selling products, you know, to avoid yes. this EMF stuff. So there's yes. kind of like a movement, a kind of battle between grounding and the EMF communities. And um, there's a lot of untruths being thrown around. So yep. we, we did discuss that in depth. So um, for anyone who asked that question, uh, that, that's just to answer that one. So the next question, someone asks, if you use an ionizer, doesn't ha that have the same effect as being grounded? No. Uh, an ionizer will um, <clears throat> produce electrically charged molecules that will attract um, negative charge or particles that will attract positive charge in the air, ionize, and, and then it'll be able to attach to each other. And you know you can see the black. You can see that on the on the walls, uh, in where you use ionizers. Uh, but they do use ionizers to reduce static charge sometime in factories. Uh, they do things, but uh, if you're using it in the room, it's going to reduce the amount of positive charges in your room. And <clears throat> uh, but is it going to have a health benefit? Uh, I think there are, are if you have if you live, work in an environment or or your air in your bedroom is very dirty, uh, like it is in most people's homes and the dust and all that kind of stuff, then ionizers probably will have an effect of helping to clean that air. But <clears throat> I trust nature. <laughs> um, you're <clears throat> when you breathe, sometimes one nostril will close down and one will be open and then sometimes it'll switch. So what that is, is you're, you're breathing, you know, positive charge and negative charge and the, uh, the when you're breathing, the, you're trying to, the, trying to balance ions so that you, you know, it has to do with the heart channel and all that kind of stuff, but I don't want to get into the tech of it, but, but anyhow, uh, you have to be careful anytime you go to the extreme of using ionized or anything else, because they are like bleach and they can do damage. You can have lung damage. You can have all kinds of problems because this is not a natural process. And so, uh, you know, air filters and things like that might be a much better way to go.
but do they have the effect of grounding? I don't think so. I don't think that's possible. Right. Will they reduce inflammation? No. So next question, is an earthed electric blanket the same? Will that work? So they mean an like earth. an electric blanket on the, on the bed, if that's just plugged into the wall, are there, is that gonna have the same effect as using a grounding mat? No, because the, the, uh, the wire in the heating pad or the electric blanket is covered in um, plastic. So it's insulated. Uh, it's going to maybe, I think they've changed them now. They used to be pretty hot, but now, um, yeah, it's, it's not gonna do anything except create heat and warm you up. Uh, but it's not gonna have any effect on grounding. In fact, in the US, the NI, National Institute of Health Sciences came out, this has been maybe 10, 15 years ago. They said that the way to use electric blanks is use them to warm your bed, but unplug them from the wall when you're, when you're ready to get into bed because otherwise you have those electric fields that are uh, in, you know, going through the home i but again i don't think that's the real problem but i you know it's just an uncommon thing put an extra blanket on follow nature a little bit here yeah so next question is um Uh, can shoes that have leather soles do the same as going barefoot? Uh, yes, if you um, if you wear now when you say leather shoe, uh, all shoes used to be made out of leather, and there were no plastics. You have to remember we invented plastics in the 1960. That was only 60 years ago. So whether it's the plastic liner or the plastic anything, whatever, those didn't exist. But in the old days, back in uh, the 50s, when I, you know, when I'm, I'm 79, so I, I go back to the 40s before all of this television and everything else. But um, back then, all of our shoes were made of leather, pure leather, and yeah. different types of leather and whatever. So when you would wear them, uh, if it were raining out, you had to take them off and carry them because if they got wet, they would get dry up and get gnarly oh really <laughs> yeah yeah oh, really? so the leather would leather would curl up and so on and then when you went to school and you put them on it was hard to get them to fit again but but anyhow so the shoes today that they make oftentimes do have a plastic liner inside so that does insulate the shoe from being conductive but uh, but what they're really asking i think here's if you took like a leather moccasin that was pure leather and you were to wear it and wear it every day for an extended period, then as you, it, your perspiration and the body salts from the perspiration would saturate the leather and make it semiconductive. So when you would be walking down the street in your, or in the, you know, down the path on your moccasins, you would be grounded just like you were grounded to the earth. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have some questions which relate to medical and health things. So first sure. of all, does it help with glaucoma in the eyes? Uh, I think glaucoma is an inflammation related health disorder. You can find that out by going to Google. And, um, um, you know, I, I can't tell people what to do treatment wise and so on. Um, but I know people who have, uh, let me put it this way. I know that we did a study back in maybe 99 where we took 24 truck drivers at a truck stop up in Caste, California. And we went and we gave them little mats to sit on. And then we connected them with wire to the ground of the, uh, you know, of the truck chassis because the truck itself is a huge ground plane. And it's going down the road and the, you know, so there's, it's staying, it's maintaining you know, a big negative charge and it's connected to the negative side of battery. So anyhow, we, we gave them to the truckers and we gave them 25 bucks and we said, if you'll send us back, if you'll, on your next trip down the road, you're, if you will write down what you experienced pain-wise and send it back to us, 
we'll send you another 25 back. So this is back in 99, so $25 was still something. And um, so anyhow, we got those studies back, most of them. And the first thing that came back that just kind of blew us away, almost everybody said we had improved night vision. So, <clears throat> so by doing that, what you're doing is you're reducing blood pressure and, um, and inflammation and they were able to see better. So we know that we have had a lot of people um, that have reported better vision, improved, improved vision, um, but glaucoma would depend on how bad it is and you know what's going yep. on and yep. everything else. So that would take a doctor to really, but is it going to help? Absolutely, because it's gonna reduce inflammation. Earthing does one thing primarily. It does two things, it, it reduces inflammation. When you put your bare feet on the earth, your body absorbs free electrons from the earth like it did for millions of years. And those free electrons reduce any of the remaining radicals that are left over from the normal, every moment oxidative burst, um, which without that, those free electrons in the body, uh, you catch it, and you, it produces inflammation and, and fire. And that's where the word comes from. Inflammation is the body's, you're lighting the body on fire as soon as you take and put, take your feet off the earth. You don't feel it until you get older and older and then it comes up in more pain and more pain and then degenerative health disorders. That's slow burning inflammation, just like a slow burning log. But as soon as you put the earth, your, your feet on the earth, those electrons naturally automatically zip up into the body, circulate through the blood, reduce the inflammation, and all of a sudden you can say, oh my God, I can breathe. Okay, so next question. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if this is safe for people who have cancer. Cancer cells have a negative charge and healthy cells are neutral to positive and grounding apparently cleans out positive charge. Well, let's put it this way. <clears throat> let's forget about positive charge for a moment. If if you have a tumor, and as I understand, and as I read, and as I hear, and as I've learned over 25 years in grounding significantly large amounts of people, uh, what I find is if you have, for instance, you know, a tumor, and you take an electrode patch like you have in your hand over there, and you just put it right on the tumor, connect it to a ground, then what's going to happen is the electrons are going to pour into the body because there's positive charge there. There's, uh, you know, oxidative radicals there. But anyhow, you have to have a pocket of inflammation, I think, before you can have, before cancer can develop. And what happens is uh, there's a few cells that become involved in the, um, inflammation and then they de-differentiate and uh, form a like a parasite and then they bring in their own blood supply and then eventually as the years and time goes by they manifest as a cancer and but what we've learned that is if you take and ground the immediate area where there is a this would be different on everybody and everything depending on what they're what stages and their lifestyle and their environment and their beliefs and everything. But if you take and ground that area, then you have a, a reservoir of, I mean, you're connected to the earth. Now you have the a reservoir of free electrons. So the electrons can continue in and they're going to sit there and they're going to restart reducing the inflammation. And sometimes this will happen in minutes. And then as soon as you reduce the inflammation, the shell around the tumor or whatever it is, then the immune system, by then the, the inflammation begins to resolve in the body. So now the immune system can come back to uh, become re-energized and then it can go back to work doing what it normally does, which is reduce pathogens and mm -hmm. Cancer is a parasite, it's a pathogen, whatever you want. However you want to address all of that, I have to be careful. I'm not trying to encourage anybody to do anything. Um, yeah. This is all, you can, ex you can experiment. This is yeah. a cheap experiment. <laughs> Take your shoes off, go out and sit on the yard. 
The next question, can I use it with blood thinners? Uh, we know that um, people who are on blood thinners, well, first of all, here's what we know. First of all, we did a study, and again, all of these things that I talk about, there's over 50 published peer-reviewed papers on the earthinginstitute.net, and you can find all of this and tons more. And um, <clears throat> But one of the main studies we found, and we believe this is probably the keystone of grounding, is as soon as you touch the earth, then your red blood cells circulate once a minute throughout your whole body. So as soon as you ground your body to the earth, then the red blood cells, you increase the negative surface charge, the amount of electrons on the surface of each red blood cell. And these are tiny, but you increase the amount of electrons on them by approximately 270%. So what happens then, like metaphorically, like magnets, if you take two negatively charged magnets, push them together, they will pull each other apart, boom. You know, they push each other apart. However, if one's positive and one's negative, they snap together, so they equalize. So <clears throat> most people who take blood thinners have thick and sticky blood. They're wearing shoes, they're living inside indoors, uh, they sleep on foam beds, and uh, you know, they're totally insulated from the earth. A lot of them haven't touched the earth in years. And so their blood is thick and sticky. And in order to compensate, um, they are put on blood thinners. These blood thinners, there's a host of them. Uh, most of them are related to cardiovascular disease. And um, so they thin the blood so the blood can get through the capillaries. And so now if you, uh, in, in nature, we know by grounding, you're going to normalize blood viscosity and you're going to, they're going to repel each other. You're going to have thin blood, like more like wine. Uh, otherwise you're going to have thick blood, more like ketchup. I'm mm -hmm. stealing that from Dr. Sinatra. Anyhow, he, um, um, so it's, if you're going to go outdoors and live barefoot, sleep grounded, do all of these kind of things, you better be careful because, um, then all of a sudden your blood is going to normalize or begin to normalize naturally. Now, if you're only going to ground for a few hours, no big deal. If you're going to ground more than you're not going to ground, then you need to start paying attention. But if you're taking warfarin or some of those um, drug, some of those drugs, if you go to the Earthing Institute, there's papers on this, there's information on this, uh, there's information in the book, the Earthing book. Um, and uh, there's just keyword, do keyword on Google or whatever, earthing and blood thinners and uh, whatever, you'll find all this information. It's readily available. But yes, be cautious if you're on blood thinners, then if you, but you're going to have your INR measured usually weekly or every so often. And the doctor will regulate or up, up or down level your. Um, blood thinners and so on. Uh, rely on your doctor if you're gonna be grounding and you, yeah. if you're on these blood thinners. This is not medical advice. So no medical advice. Next question, if I have big plants inside my house in a pot, uh, do I discharge by touching it? I guess the answer is no, because they're not on the earth, are they? They're just in insulated pots. Yeah. Yeah, if you put a plant on the earth and grow it and put one in a pot, the one on the earth will grow twice as fast and it'll be more full and more energetic. The ones in indoors, they're kind of wimpy. Um, yeah. So my foundation is concrete over soil, then a layer of ceramic tile. If I'm barefoot in my house all day, am I grounded? No, because the ceramic tile is baked and it's glass and it's coated with a glass coating. And that would be an insulator. If you tear up the tile and polish your floor, then you've got the best ground floor there is. So if you go the polish the, remove the tile and sand down the concrete and polish it. Okay. And then use throw rugs where you need them. Uh, then you got a perfect ground. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
next question. So I mentioned the synthetic shoes being invented in the 1960s. Um, and I have someone who's challenging that. So he says, um, synthetic rubber was developed 1931 to 35. Uh, and this has nothing to do with shoes. Rubber soles have been around since the 1800s. Synthetic rubber is not the only kind of rubber. People have been wearing all kinds of shoes for thousands of years. Leather, leather shoes mostly, and leather is an insulator. So uh, he's saying a lot. He's saying a lot there. I guess the leather thing, like you said, if the leather is not wet, then it would be an insulator. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's correct. There's been rubber around forever. And rubber were primarily used uh, in commercial environments, you know, work environments where they really had to have grip and or they had to be insulated from the earth because of, uh, you know, like your welding and grounding and various things. And so, no, they've been around for a long, long time. But it wasn't until, you know, 1950s, they came up with the tennis shoe, the kids type tennis shoe it was popular but it was 1960 when they invented the synthetic polymers and the first thing we did was make the synthetic sold shoes the synthetic rubber and they were cheap so now everybody could afford shoes that mm. started in the 1960 and <clears throat> before then there were various types of shoes, more or less for uh, commercial or whatever, uh, tennis, the, the original tennis shoe had a rubber sole, but rubber and plastic are two different things. Rubber was expensive, uh, plastics were inexpensive. So what happened is in 19, you know, 1940s, when I was a kid, you know, we, we never wore shoes unless we went to school or church. Uh, 19, 1950s, we, um, you know, work shoes. If we, we used to call them clod hoppers because you had to put shoes on in order to jump across the plowed, you know, when you're out in the field plowing and stuff. So that's where that name clod hoppers comes from. But anyhow, um, so no, he's, he's right, but he doesn't understand what I'm trying to present here. Uh, the, the concept is the explosive growth of shoes, and yeah. they're in the earth in the earthing book, and I believe in the earthing movie and through in earthing papers. You'll see that chart. It starts in 1950s. Diabetes was barely on the chart. 1960s, diabetes started to skyrocket. Then came along, you know, um, autism, lupus, MS, all of these, you know. Cancer began to increase exponentially, um, and and you know all of the cardiovascular diseases and so on. So they all can, you know started to grow exponentially like this since 1960. So what happened in 1960 that caused this to change? Uh, first of all, the EMFers claim it. They said, "Oh no, it's it's EMF, whatever." Well, the EMFs go back 100 years or 150 years. Uh, and then, then they went to, well, it's the high fructose sugar, it's this, it's that, it's that, it's whatever. But when you do your you do your you know, epidemiological research, you, you, there's only one thing that really changed globally in 1960. We invented the rubber sole shoe and they were very inexpensive and everybody could afford shoes and everybody wore shoes. And if you didn't wear shoes, you were poor, you were something wrong with you. Um, but, but there was the cultural change. Uh, everybody started wearing shoes, 1960 because of, and then, uh, yeah, and then Phil Knight, he came along with, took his wife's waffle iron into the garage and took a, some of this rubber and then stuck it in a waffle iron to create cleats, you know, for running shoes. And that set in motion the, um, athletic shoe, which primarily everybody today wears athletic shoes. Yeah. And so it's all related to this. Uh, so it's it's not just one thing. You could write a book on on the history of shoes. And but the yeah. one event that happened was 1960 was the explosive growth of the synthetic sole shoe, not the rubber sole shoe. What do you think about because we know today that vegetable oils 
they're really inflammatory. They're really bad for us. And our body holds on to them. It takes eight years to get it out of our body. Do you think the grounding would uh, kind of neutralize the effects of these uh, oils or do you think it wouldn't really do anything? Well, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, it's hard to answer just yes or no on these things. Anyhow, first of all, you have to understand how the immune system works. The immune system, every, every breath of air that you breathe, you're breathing in pathogens. Everything you eat and all of the metabolic uh, slough off, I mean, all the free radicals that are creating during metabolism. You know, there's just a war going on at all times in the body. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> so what happens is when you, if you're ungrounded, then your immune system, you know, you have a pathogen, a neutrophil will swim over and identify it, encapsulate it like a jelly cell, and then it'll release what they call reactive oxygen species. That's like pouring acid on a bug, you know, and uh, it'll eat it up. So what it is, these, these reactive oxygen species that they release are so powerfully charged, and it's the only thing on our environment that can rip an electron from the shell of a pathogen and destroy mm -hmm. it. That's how the immune system works. That's perfect, and it does it all day long, every day, in day in, day out. The problem is, if there's any excess radicals left over, they're, they're, they're hot, they're electrically charged, they're hot. They're only gonna last for a few nanoseconds. Uh, you know, uh, free radicals don't build up in your body. Free radical damage builds up in your body. But these free radicals will only last for a nanosecond. So they're going to steal an electron from whatever is close by, rip an electron from it, damage it. Message goes back to the immune system. Hey, something's still here damaging. And so it sends another neutrophil to clean up that mess. And then you set up a chain reaction. It's just chronic. It just keeps going. So it's like taking a match and starting a fire. That's mm. why they call it inflammation. Okay, so, so the immune system is challenged now because it's not only trying to maintain everything like food and air and everything else. It has to now put up with this inflammatory or this inflammation that it itself is creating that it doesn't know because it doesn't realize that, we're, that the body's no longer naturally grounded. So with this loss of ground, so the immune system got two fires, the normal fire of life, and now it's got this big fire uh, that's just ongoing smoldering inflammation that's mm -hmm. eating up tissue that's uh, you know compromising uh, whatever it can be your you know whatever a hundred different things anyhow so so now when you eat a food or something that is may be more toxic to the body if the immune system is compromised then the immune system has less resources, less ability to remove it or to manage it as it would in nature. Mm. Um, so the, I will only say one thing, and I know this from, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up on a ranch. Uh, we had, we ran cattle and, and, and our whole lives were about keeping the pasture clean and pristine so the cows would be healthy so that we could make, some, make a living and live that year. And if the cows got sick and we had to call the vet, we had no option. We had to take the keys, call the banker and the vet at the same time, throw them up in the air and leave because there's no way you're gonna be able to buy groceries if the, if, the, if, the, if the cows get sick. So every time, that was my job as a cowboy, just sit on a horse, go out there and, and, and keep an eye on the cattle, make sure that they're healthy. And if they're not, take them out, put them in a holding pen, then go ride the pasture and find out what's making them sick and then move them to where there's more grass or better grass or the water or whatever, but something in the pasture made them sick. So that's what the life is about. So today we eat everything, do everything. We don't even know what's good or bad for us because we're sold everything under the sun for every you know thing. And But anyhow, I, I, I know that all the people I have grounded personally, that health is the body's most natural state if you can re, if you do not have health, then something is interfering with the immune system's ability to maintain health. We know as a result of all the work we've done that it's, this loss of ground is 
the underlying cause of inflammation. Because in all of our studies, when we grounded people with inflammation, the inflammation disappears rather instantly. So mm -hmm. we understand this. So, but anyhow, so today, um, our bodies are challenged because we're no longer naturally grounded. And that um, challenges the immune system because the immune system's got a bigger problem. So, but if you put the fire out, stop the inflammation, then the immune system will go back and it will clean up that mess. Then it will go back and start cleaning up everything else. And the immune system only knows to do one thing, return the body to normal. When I started out on this stuff 25 years ago, they said, well, cartilage doesn't grow back. Uh, arthritis doesn't straighten out, all this kind of, that's craziness. <laughs> you ground people and it's, I mean, it's, you redo, move, remove the stress give the body its natural resources, which is ground. Mm -hmm. Good food helps, and I can tell stories about all that. But, 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 but anyhow, it's, uh, health is the body's most natural state, and I think that the immune system can clean up anything if it has the resources. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, then it's gonna become toxic and add to the problem and create more inflammation as a secondary byproduct. I see. And, uh, but, but but that's how I look at it. I don't look at it like, well, you got to take this pill to do this and that yeah. vitamin to do that and whatever and whatever. I don't have anything against vitamins. I take vitamins, whatever. I eat good food too. I mean, I primarily eat good food. And, I, and I, I'm 79 years old. I can, go, I can still walk five miles as long as I'm yeah. grounded. I put shoes on in an hour and I'm done. It's like a foundation, isn't it? Like grounding is a foundation. Then you can look at your food and your supplements and, you know... Yeah. It's like that, having a that strong foundation. So yeah. that was the, the last question. And thank you so much for answering them. And I can see you have so much passion for this subject. And I'm sure you could go on all night with these um, questions and answers. That was the last one. So thank you so much for answering these. I do this every day, all day long. <laughs> right. Okay. And you still and, love uh, it. That's it's amazing. You, you still well, I do. It's, it's, really, it's really important because, you know, it's like, in the U.S., you have 140 kids with autism. Excuse yeah. me. You have everybody is all the women have inflammation-related health disorders. A lot of them don't even recognize it until it gets out of control. You know, this is lupus, MS, fibromyalgia, all of these, these, and then then it goes on to cancers and cardiovascular and whatever. These are all automatic uh, uh, inflammation-related health disorders. Inflammation, we didn't even hear, we'd never heard of the word inflammation until 204. You know, that's 20 years ago, okay? So this is all modern stuff. This is all, we, we, we invented the plastics 60 years ago. I've been doing research for 25 years <laughs> yeah. but, and, and others. And every, so we're all still learning. Nobody has all the answers and we're still trying to sort it out. Yeah. And 90% of what we hear and what we're sold is craziness. But, yeah. but health is, uh, but, but anyhow, it's really important to get this information to moms. And yeah. that's who we cater, that's who we cater to. We, we ship out thousands of these things daily and around the world now. Now we, uh, I appreciate um, all the people who are talking about grounding, experiencing it because it, it's helping to raise the issue, the questions, you know, like you, yeah. I mean, there's a million views a week on, on on um, podcasts and whatever. So there's, the interest is really yeah. growing, but but it starts with just barefoot. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to do anything. Don't trust on anybody. Go yeah. figure it out yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then eat some good food and drink some fresh water and and, and go for a walk. You don't have to spend life is life. Is, yeah, and vitamin D, you just go out and sit yeah. in the sun for a little bit. It's yeah. nature. Get back in nature. Find your place in nature. You're not going to sleep out there. You're not going to do that. And that's why we had to create these 911 mats or whatever you want to call them so yeah. we could ground people until somebody's got it in the next three or four generations. They have to clean up our the way we build homes. They have to clean up the way we make shoes or bedding or anything we sit, sleep, or walk. Mm -hmm. If Earth Earth's ground is what maintains the immune system electrically stable. We've got to fix it. Well, that's that's work for the next 60 years. I won't be here. It doesn't matter. But there's a whole generations of, of new opportunities here. Well, 
but you started the movement. You are the pioneer, so you're always going to be referred back to. You know, you're going to be the guy. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was an astute observer. That's all. <laughs> I was lucky. This fell into my lap. I got to play with it for 25 years. I love it. I, I get to. It, the thing I love about it is, <clears throat> it's free. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 health. Health is free. Yeah. Uh, we just got to remove what's interfering with it, and it's our lifestyle. These are environmental health disorders, an inflammation-related health disorder. Inflammation doesn't manifest in nature. It it does a little bit more today, but it, when I was young, animals in the wild, like and dogs and coyote and deer and antelope, all those animals in the wild, they don't they don't have cancer. Doesn't manifest. They don't have cardiovascular disease and so on. Uh, on the other hand, the animals who live indoors with their owners, they die, 50% of them die from cancer, just like their owners. So that's evident. This is an environmental health disorders. Yeah. We have stepped out of nature. It isn't about EMF or dirty, like you know, all this craziness. We have stepped out of nature and we, no matter what, how many pills you have, no matter what you do, you can't compensate. You are a part of nature. You are the earth up walking around and you've cut off your umbilical cord. You got it. We need to reconnect and yeah. let the earth has got millions of years of evolution in our built into our bodies. We have, uh, you know, a thousand grandmothers, a thousand or tens of thousands of grandmothers and whatever in genetics and all this stuff. And, and, and we got here, they brought us here and they didn't have any of this modern stuff. But people are starting to realize, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful because, you know, there is a movement of people who are interested in this, they're talking about it. And like you say, it, it's a growing thing. So I'm hopeful that, you know, people are becoming conscious of this now. I, I think they are. I think it's in the air. I think it's, there's, there, there's a global, um, there's a global energy. There's a, uh, a source of, or, you know, we're all one thing. I mean, we're humans and we are all connected. We all have electric fields and energy fields and energetics. And we come, we couple up with each other when we communicate or talk or touch or whatever. So we're all one and we all kind of equalize and share things and learn things. And, and you know, it's brutal the way we go about things sometimes. But on the other hand, ultimately, I, I think that people are becoming more conscious. Mm. I think the green movement, the you know, the, the food movements, all these things are part of it. It yeah. doesn't happen overnight. And don't try to change people's minds. You just give them some information. And then in secret, they can go out in the backyard in the dark and put their feet on the earth and see if it works. <laughs> you know, whatever it takes, you know. Yeah. But, but it's going to happen. Yes, it has to happen because we have to restore the health of our young people. Yeah. We have to take care of our moms. And we have to take care of the elderly who got us here. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. thank you very much for your time. All right. I'm going to put <laughs> I enjoyed the, it. Yeah. I'm going to put all the links below for uh, the site for Europe and for the US and Canada. So anyone watching yeah. who wants to check out all these products, not that you have to buy anything, yeah. you can just go out and walk. You don't in have the to buy. You don't, you, don't, you don't have yeah. to buy anything. But if you do want to check them out, I'll put the links below. And yeah, thanks again for your time. And have a great evening. All right. All right. Namaste. I'd like to thank everyone for their comments and their questions. And I hope you found this really interesting. I've certainly found this interesting and I find Clint really inspiring and I'm really inspired by his passion for this subject. I'm going to put the links for the official Clint Ober merchandise, both in the US and Canada and also in Europe below. And I've got a couple of discount codes. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.